Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about capacitors. So first, in case you don't know what a capacitor is, capacitors are electrical circuit elements that are used to store charge, kind of like a battery, but not exactly the same thing. If you wanna know what they look like, they usually just look like two metal plates like this, separated some distance between each other. And if you want a better visual representation, then go ahead, put your hands together like this, and there you go, you just made your own capacitor. So there's three equations we need to know with capacitors. The first one is C equals epsilon naught times A divided by D. I usually call this the definition of capacitance. The variables here are epsilon naught, where epsilon naught is called the permeativity of free space. That's not important. What's important is that you know it's 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12th. You may be thinking you've never seen this number before. As a matter of fact, you have, because K, Coulomb's constant, nine times 10 to the ninth, is really just one over four pi epsilon naught. So in other words, you have seen it before just indirectly. A is the area of one of the plates. This is one thing that usually confuses my students. It's not the area of both plates, like I'm not telling you to multiply your answer by two or to add them together. I'm just saying you want the area of one of these plates and that's it, that's the area we want. And then D is the distance separating these two plates. So in my picture, this would be D. And we want those units in meters. So that's the first equation for capacitance. Then we have another equation. This one is going to relate the charge and the voltage. C equals Q over V. In other words, charge divided by voltage, or you could say electric potential, because that's the same thing as voltage. And then the only other equation I have is the energy stored in a capacitor. The equation for that is U, I don't know why we choose U, but U equals one half CV squared, that's capital V voltage, not velocity, although it does look kind of like the kinetic energy equation, one half MV squared. And if you choose to use this equation to solve for C, then you get one half Q over V, V squared, and the V cancels with the V squared, leaving you with one half Q, V. Both of these equations work. Personally, I like the left one more, but you can choose either one you want. And that's everything I have to say about capacitors. Now let's go ahead and do some practice problems. So for the first one I have today, I have a capacitor hooked up to a battery like this. The plates here in this capacitor are circular with a diameter of 80 centimeters. These plates are separated by a distance of 3.4 millimeters, and the voltage in this battery is 6 volts. And my question is, I want to find the charge stored on this capacitor. So how would we do this? So if you choose to start with C equals Q over V, we have the voltage, it's six, but we don't have the capacitance. And of course, we're gonna find that capacitance using the other equation, C equals epsilon naught A over D. Before I plug in numbers for this equation, I have to know that the area of a circle is pi radius squared. Be careful, I gave us diameter, which was 80 centimeters. So the diameter will be 40 centimeters, but I don't like centimeters, I gotta convert that to meters and I do that by dividing by 100, so we have 0.4 meters as the radius. In other words, the area is equal to pi times 0.4 squared, and if I plug that in a calculator, I get 0.503 units meters squared, but I don't really care about the units until the final answer. We said the distance between them was 3.4 millimeters, but again, I gotta convert that to meters, so I'm dividing that by 1,000, because if, if I have 3.4 millimeters, I gotta divide by 1,000, so 0 0.0034, now that's in meters, the units I want. And then finally, C equals epsilon naught, which is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12th, times the area, 0 0.503, and then divided by the distance, 0 0.0034. Plug this in a calculator, and we'll get 1.31 times 10 to the minus 9th. Oh, and I forgot to mention the units for capacitance are F, which stands for the farad, and the farad, of course, is named after the famous physicist Michael Faraday. 
which we talk about him more later in the year when we get to Faraday's Law, but that's not for today. And once I have the capacitance, I just have to plug it in the equation C equals Q over V. So since I'm solving for charge, just multiply both sides by V. So the charge is going to be C times V. In other words, 1.31 times 10 to the minus 9th times the voltage, which was 6. That's going to be my charge. And that will get me a final charge of 7.85 times 10 to the minus 9th units for charge. That is the Coulomb, and that's my final answer. Or if they want the answer in nano coulombs, you would multiply this answer by 10 to the 9th, which would then make it 7.85 nano coulombs, which is also a correct answer. Depends what units they want. And so that's it for the first one. Not too bad. So for the next problem, it's going to be a little bit harder. I'm going to say the original capacitance in a capacitor is C naught with an original electric potential of V naught. Not all capacitors have to be connected to a battery. So I'm going to tell you this one is not connected to a battery. And I'm also going to tell you the charge is going to stay the same throughout this problem. So what I'm going to do is I am going to double the distance between the plates of my capacitor and I want to know what will my new electric potential be and I want the answer in terms of V naught. And then after that in part B I want you to find the new energy stored in the capacitor and I want that answer in terms of C naught and V naught. Okay, so one more time. Original capacitance, C naught. Original electric potential, V naught. Charge is gonna stay the same in this problem, meaning that the electric potential or voltage is the one changing. I'm doubling the distance between the plates. What is the new voltage or electric potential? And finally, what is the new energy? So this is a classic comparison problem in physics. Whenever I have comparison problems, I always think it's a good idea to find the original quantities and here's how I would do that. So first, C naught equals Q divided by V naught. Simple as that. Since they're asking me to solve for electric potential, I wanna solve for V naught. That means I'm multiplying both sides by V naught and then dividing by C naught. In other words, the original voltage V naught equals Q divided by C naught. I don't need to write Q naught because that's not changing, so I can just leave that as Q. Next, the new voltage. I need a variable for this. I will call it V new, and that is going to equal to the new charge, which did not change, that's still Q, divided by my new capacitance. The question is, what is the new capacitance? I have to find it using that equation for capacitance, C equals epsilon naught A over D. I have to ask myself what changed. So in this problem, I doubled the distance between the plates. In other words, if this is my original C naught with some distance D, then I know my new capacitance is equal to epsilon naught A divided by 2D, which I can rewrite like this by pulling out the one half out in front. And the reason why I would do this is because this quantity right here is my original C naught, meaning my new capacitance is equal to one half times C naught. Maybe you saw that a different way, an easier way to you. Great, then you can do it that way, but this is the way I'm doing it. And this is my new capacitance, which I will now be plugging in this equation right here. So in other words, my new voltage is equal to the charge, which did not change, divided by one half C naught. Now, once again, in terms of my strategy, I want to write the new voltage kind of in terms of the old one, in other words, I want to isolate Q over C naught by itself over here and then write the one half as a coefficient. That one half is in the denominator, which means technically it's two over one like this, because whenever you divide by a complex fraction, it's really the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. And since this right here is my original V naught, then it looks like my new voltage is equal to twice my original voltage V naught. And there's my answer. When I double the distance, I am doubling the electric potential. Great. And then for part B, they wanted me to find the new energy stored in this capacitor. So I'm gonna use the equation U equals one half CV squared. Again, I wanna find the original first, so I guess I'll call it U naught equals 
1 half C naught V naught squared. And remember, for the new one, which I'll do right now, it's going to be 1 half C nu V nu squared. And we said the new capacitance was 1 half C naught, the original, and V nu was equal to 2 V naught. Plugging that in, I'm going to get 1 half, 1 half C naught times 2 V naught quantity squared. Remember, if it's quantity squared, I got to square both numbers. So that's going to be 4 V naught squared. And then the 1 half times 1 half C naught is still there. And since this question just wanted the answer in terms of C naught and V naught, it means that I want to combine all these coefficients together, 1 half times 1 half times 4 which just gets me one. So the answer, my new energy stored in the capacitor, is equal to C naught times V naught squared. And that's my answer in terms of the variables they wanted, or comparing that to the original one half C naught V naught squared. You could also say that the energy doubled when I doubled the distance. And so there, that's gonna do it for this problem and this video. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video, take care and bye-bye.